get those shortcuts mapped, you get comfy, and it's just like a left click, right click bonanza, and you can just power through stuff. <laughs> so fast. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Transparent. Yeah. And the other ones were quite aged. And I honestly didn't think they were going to. I found a crack in one of the arms before I went to the UK and I was a little concerned. Oh, no. There. I'm still alive. Oh. Oh, I looked into the last last time we were talking over each other quite a bit. And I looked into the time lag and it's almost like three tenths of a second through fiber optics. Yeah. No, that explains why there was so much lag. Yeah. So oh, it's like, geez. that's a huge amount of time to like not catch each other. Yeah. It's almost like talking on a walkie talkie at that point. Jim is just uh, an orb of, oh, there he is. Baby pants. Yeah, hopefully. Although I've got like maybe substandard yeah. beach internet. Hello. Enough Testing. to get us through. Ba- baby pants shipping out the door. Yeah. A momentous Dang. week. <laughs> I said, it sounds like you're on a phone. I just abandoned, <laughs> abandoned video. That kind of works, I guess. Oh, my God. So, baby pants shipping this week. Ah. It's a big one. Yeah, baby pants. Finally shipping. We're kind of finishing things at the end of, or the beginning of the week, getting the nested sheets kind of ready to go. And then once we started running them, they were basically perfect. That's right. We were joking how it was like a real sweatshop production Uh, of smashing little things with your hands, like very, (laughs) very hands-on, very sweaty. But we got... Less than we would have liked to, in terms of like produced and shipped, but there are some shipped, yeah. they're out, they're on the way to people, and we should be able to finish it up, all the orders we have by next week, I think. That's exciting. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That's great. Yours is just picked up. Yeah, it's exciting. Can't wait to get it. I'm already planning all the reels I'm going to make. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> I was going to say, oh, the... The plastic, the acetal, was there a difference in brand? Like, because I know acetal, yeah. Dalrin's the brand and acetal's the plastic, right? Like, did you shop around? So we've actually been using, better? we've been using HDPE because it's way oh, more cool. economical. Yeah. Totally. And from what I could see other people making stuff, like it, acetal's probably a better choice, you know, like if you're like stressing it to the nth degree but after consulting a few people and looking at what else is out there it seems fine but yeah there's kind of a weird shortage or like supply issues with all types of sheet plastic so like one vendor would have stuff the other one wouldn't and then now the same to all have it i think i was saying i don't know if it got cut off the first sheet we had we've been testing with was actually kind of crappy it turns out to be a fine product but it just took more cleanup than we wanted and we got to the second sheet and started running that and it's just like beautiful like ricky was literally giddy about how clean it was coming off it's like (laughs) cut all the hand work out basically of cleanup yeah right whenever i've cut hdpe i found the that handwork is quite labor intensive like Mm -hmm. cleaning up all the little fluffy edges and burrs and stuff yeah right and it sounds like you've got a good recipe though. Nah, the sharing. first sheet was a lot of, we just were kind of going by the idea of like, well, okay, this is what it is. And then, oh. you know, it was a lot of little fuzzy things at times and didn't change like any of the tools and then started cutting the second yeah. sheet and it just was fine. And I, I have from experience on, I think acetal or UHMW, the age of the material will change that too. I don't remember which way it goes, but it's like it, it could be a few months and all of a sudden it's cleaner. I think if it's fresher, it's cleaner, well, but somebody will probably write and say, no, you're wrong. It's the it's, opposite. Surely it's like a good cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It gets smellier with time. MMM. I love a good age Delrin. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, mm. it's been good. It's yeah, been exciting. Uh, that's cool. Very cool. Very good. And have you still got orders coming in? Yeah. There's, we had, oh, three in the last day 24 hours so fantastic i mean that's a little more than normal but it's it seems like whenever it catches people at the right time i've been curious whether or not we they will start to pick up they're ready to ship rather than some indefinite timeline that i get like it's kind of hard to (laughs) especially if you don't know who they like we are maybe trust that we're going to ship it or something i guess yeah for sure it's been good morale. Like we've, you know, it's been a lot of like ups yeah. and downs with it. And when you start to see the boxes get stacked up that you're going to send out, it's like such a great feeling of all the work yeah, that put awesome. into it. 
there's a little bit of animosity of like, what are people going to think, you know, like actually trying it, but also just kind of relief that at that point. Very cool. Well done. Yeah. Nice. How are things going for you guys? Yeah, pretty good. Mm, I am in beach mode a little bit, but I had a good week. I've been, again, I feel like we're just changing stuff constantly here, which we are, but <laughs> basically I... I was failing to keep up with the quoting load. I think uh-huh. I said in last week's podcast, I missed it. Yep. But that was like the third or fourth week in a row where I'd missed my mm. targets. And I was just what was finding that I wasn't getting through as much as I needed to. So we've changed things around a little bit again, just sort of temporarily, because we had also at the same time, we had a real shortfall of detailing work, which meant that we were getting really slow out on the floor so we've got we've got more jobs than we've ever had before wow yeah but there's kind of this bottleneck where stuff hasn't been detailed and isn't ready for production so being the you know that guy who can do everything it's (laughs) (laughs) that means i can sort of jump in at whatever stage of the process i'm most useful so i've been dropped back into detailing infusion this last week, taking a step back from sales, Aaron's stepping up and we've doubled his hours in quoting support. So he's kind of leading that at the moment. I'm trying to support the detailing side of things, and which was quite delightful, actually, just getting to see <laughs> a lot of hours into fusion. It's been a while since I've done sort of any, any heavy lifting in there. Like, you know, I'm doing bits and pieces and a bit of product development and stuff like that, but not sort of punching out jobs. So yeah, that was quite satisfying. I bet. Um, yeah, you know, starting to feel like I was losing my touch a little bit, but it was great to jump in and <laughs> start, you know, yeah, reestablish my templates and make some new ones. And so I've spent the last, I don't know, forty-eight hours. We escaped down to the beach this weekend for a long weekend. Yeah, and I've spent a lot of time on the couch, just fiddling in Fusion, building new cabinet templates because we've got a few sort of basically stock sort of cabinet making jobs coming up so i need some really robust templates to build a whole lot of cabinets so uh, so that's fun do you here's a probably it's either too personal or you're not going to care at all do you get any side eye for working on fusion when you're supposed to be on vacation <laughs> no 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 that's nice yeah look i, I <laughs> yes I, <laughs> I should you know i should be spending as much time as possible with the kids yeah and i am but when there's moments of downtime yeah my form of relaxation in this context is to pull out the laptop and just poke around (laughs) the same um, way (laughs) with parameters so yeah it's not like i'm sort of busting out long hours but it's you know it's sitting there it's i suppose in my defense um (laughs) i often think of it as like a sketchpad, like the fact that it's a laptop and has mm-hmm. Chrome open and Slack's probably still open somewhere in the background is unfortunate because at that point, when I'm in that headspace, I see it as like an, just an open sketchbook and pen and sort of it's sitting there, I'm aware of it, and then I can walk over it to it and dabble and, you know, write down another entry in my journal or sketch out another idea it's kind of the same thing it's just the digital equivalent of that sketchbook at that point i'm not not clocking billable hours or thinking about clients i'm just sort of Mm -hmm. noodling around so yeah i'm the same i do the same thing and i think it's always i definitely go too far i have gone too far with getting tied into an idea and a you know something that i'm really infatuated with solving on those in those circumstances and so it turns into like a, are you ever going to leave that thing kind of thing where I'm sure you're probably better at like just knowing when to quit probably. And I, I think I'm sure the kids probably help make that happen too. Versus, they, yeah, they dra- yeah. drag you away pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, no, it is interesting. I had an interesting chat yesterday. A guy, Alex from New Zealand reached out on Instagram and we caught up yesterday for a quick screen share and chat about fusion because he's kind of doing the same thing at the moment he's building out a whole bunch of cabinet templates and yeah. just compared notes it looks like we've got very similar approaches in terms of how we're doing our library and setup but he had some really interesting ideas in terms of how he's doing things it was cool i felt like something about 
those last few reels I've done on Instagram where I've used the script and screen shared some yeah. process out of Fusion or Rhino has kind of reinvigorated the DMs that I used to get a lot about like, how do you do this? Or what post process are you using? Or like, mm-hmm. what are you doing in Fusion versus Rhino? Blah, blah, blah. Which is lovely because I love talking to people about that stuff. It's kind of my happy place. Yeah. It's an interesting thinking about. I've met so many people that way, like digitally, and then never actually oh. met them, right? Like that's not common. You meet people over the world without knowing it. And in a weird way, going to Birmingham, I, I physically meet a decent amount of people that I'd never really would have. I mean, other than like a IMTS or something, there was no good reason yeah. why I would see them in person. So that's kind of cool, like to put real people, real physical bodies to <laughs> like these, you know, Instagram handles basically. And you yeah. know, just having talked about, you know, like those cabinets forever with Rob Blockwood, like to sit and chat about that in person was an interesting, you know, experience. I'm sure he's gone mm. to many more of these type of events and, and done that. But it, uh, the real world is nice too. It's funny how we've lived in this like distanced thing for so long. It feels like that whole experience of going to the UK, not to go back to that forever, but it was on that same idea. Mm. I was pretty conservative about like wearing a mask on the plane and all the way over there. Cause my goal was to get to the UK without getting sick by some chance. And yeah. There's definitely, I I came to realize after I got there that, you know, nobody's really wearing masks in the UK and there's definitely a decent amount of people still in the States wearing them, uh, you know, myself included. And I basically came to realize like everybody in the UK seemingly got vaccinated at the same time as like probably what most countries did. Like when they could, they did it together. But there was this unfortunate movement of being against that here seemingly Mm. and this distrust that it was created kind of both ways that not to get too deep into that but it's just like it was kind of amazing to be in a place where you didn't have to worry about it and maybe that's what your experience is like i guess but definitely not here still even on the way back there was people more people on you know in masks than there were like there so it's a weird experience yeah and i think it was a pretty cohesive effort here to get vaxxed i mean obviously there's always allies and issues but generally speaking in the circles we move in yeah Yeah. everyone was on the same page like all of my staff got vaccinated before me without you know we never had to have a conversation at work about it it's just like everyone just went out and did it and you know I i ended up being the the one that was late in the end so yeah that was easy and yeah 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 for sure I think more than anything, my thought on that was just, it was nice to see so many people, meet people, talk to smart Mm. people, but like being able to just kind of like wander around, go into a pub and not worry about like, it was always in the back of my mind, but like it wasn't concerning like it is here sometimes or it was. And it definitely changed Mm. some of my outlook too on like coming back. I think there's just some PTSD for me and like always being aware of that to either protect like myself or my family or our shop from bringing something yeah. you know to it yeah for sure hey i had a comment slash question on the autodesk event photos it looked like a bit of a boys club yes were there yes. any any women invited or slash on the team yeah there was very few and i think there was an effort to try to find some women mm. to be included and i don't know how your stats are i think it's similar like almost all of my metrics on youtube instagram it's like 98 percent men following and i think the industry Uh, is just so strongly at least maybe here in the states it's so strongly male dominated but Mm. it's definitely something i've been trying to like i think we talked about this a little bit like i would love to hire people that weren't the same type you know the same category right of often here it's male and white and Yeah, no, unfortunately, there wasn't very many. And Autodesk does employ people that are not that for sure. It, in terms of customers, there was not very many. I think there was only one woman that, that was there. Yeah. Yeah, right. Interesting. Yeah. No, it needs to change that. for sure. Um, does need to change. Interesting hearing your breakdown of stats. That's very high. I think I haven't looked into it too deeply, but I know in Instagram we're sort of 50% because oh, oh, wow. probably about 60% male weighted. Uh, yeah but not too bad i'm guessing that's probably yeah. that you're retail facing consumer facing to a to a strong degree Maybe. yeah 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 because i think mean, we've talked about before you don't 
have a lot of like job applicants that are non male, right? Like it's mostly mostly men. Is that I think you said when that before? When we're recruiting. Yeah, we maybe don't not. Do too badly in that respect. Oh, nice. I thought you'd said that before. Um, the, the team is certainly a bit biased. Yeah. Or weighted the wrong way. But, and that's something I'd love to fix. But when we do, when we do do call outs for jobs, we get a, we get a pretty good mix of applicants, I have to say. I reckon we'll be hiring again soon in the coming months. So yeah. I'm looking forward to going through that recruitment process again now that Sarah's kind of wrangling the how that all works I think it's going to be a much tighter and more professional process than it's been <laughs> in the past so it's hard uh, it's so hard it is, it's so hard yeah yeah but yeah I, I've found in the past when we're recruiting that you know the tighter and more structured we are about it actually the more enjoyable it yeah and you know and the better better the results are as well in terms of who we end up getting uh, yeah because you know until you know a couple of years ago I think we'd only ever done one sort of proper formal interview. Like it was always like really ad hoc of like, oh, you need a job, sure. Come, on, <laughs> come, come and work for us. <laughs> uh, whereas, yeah, the tighter we get on that, the, the better the results are, I think, for everybody. It's definitely a different experience, mm. I would surmise. I would guess that you having about eight people versus most of my experience hiring has been I have one to two people helping and... Honestly, even going from yeah. one to having somebody there versus I need somebody at all is a complete different experience of like, I wouldn't, it's not desperation, but it's like, you know, I think you said one time, it's like, are you a warm body? Like, come on, let's go. Not that, you know, yeah, not yeah. discerning. <laughs> it's such a different experience when you have, I would say backup or, you know, you have people that you trust to get stuff accomplished and you're just trying to accentuate those, you know, situations or like take on some mm. task set versus like i just need somebody to help me which is honestly i feel like most yeah. of my hiring has been kind of that not that yeah, yeah yeah i still am happy to have found the right people but mm. yeah get off the heavy hard conversations back to a little bit of my trip it was such a long time on planes that especially on the way there i i had some good sketchbook time and awesome it's like sometimes that's really fruitful you know, even in just the sense of like random stuff that is just kind of floating around your head. It's not like defined, it's like forms or something like that. But in this circumstance, I was like, I really got to figure out these ATC pedestal things. Like how, what's, what are the changes that need to be made that makes this like scalable? It just clicked all of the things that I was needing to like think about and solve. And my fairly poor sketching skills actually served me well for once and i like <laughs> got everything drawn that i was like oh man i got all this figured out so i didn't open cool fusion uh, at all for that circumstance but when i got back uh, right. i and i think it was this week a couple days ago i just kind of tore through that and now have this like totally parametric like i can scale how many are in a row and like how the base plate works and it all kind of like mounts together we can make all the parts on our mill pretty easily which is super exciting because i was thinking some the base part would have to be made by a bigger machine but i i think i think i took that out of the equation so i'm hoping to start prototyping cool. those soon because there's really not a lot to be figured out at this point whereas you know when yeah. you started them it was like a lot of a lot of question marks but now that it's like second version it feels fast mm, fantastic and it looks like something, oh, well, that was going to be my next question, but you've already said it, but it, <laughs> it's going to be makeable. Yeah. So I, you can make this thing on your I mill. Basically all parts. I still would probably do the like forks on the router just because I don't, they kind of work well. They can come from a sheet. We yeah, might actually, okay. I'm really hoping we can use the drop from the dust boots to be, I don't know if HTP is going to be an acceptable material for that. Yeah. But we'll test it. And if if so, we've got plenty of material for that then, which is kind of cool. Like, finds a good use for awesome. it. Yeah. Yeah. Drop such a good word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have like a lot of words for that. Right. Yeah. Um, it hits the floor. That's cool. Yeah. So how many of those can you fit? Like, can you theoretically build those into a matrix on your table? Or can you only have one row? 
Right. Can you build those into a matrix, or can you only have sort of one row across the? the uh, I am fairly certain you could do pretty complex things. Like somebody asked me if you could do a row facing each way recently. Yeah, and I think that's probably very possible. My experience with modifying the controller is been somewhat limited in that I modified it to work in the same movement so like the the challenge with that would be after a certain tool number it would have to know to switch movements to pick up the next tool set yeah you know and forward and moving in x positive versus x negative kind of thing but i've seen people move those all around and it's just a matter of i guess solving it but i yeah at this point my goal was to for us was to go from we had five at the time when we started to yep you could get 10 from Shop Saver, and ours currently has 12 on the 4x8 machine. Cool. And a lot of people do have a larger machine than that, so my thought is the 5x5 five mach- five by machines, 5x10 five by or 12 machines can do like yeah, 16 yeah. possibly, mm, and then it helps with the dust collection possibilities as well. Like There's a whole other level I haven't gotten to with the dust collection where we can start to focus... <laughs> the dust boots lower portion a little bit more if you have the tool posts like we do because then they're not Mm. like i had to kind of go with a method that allowed i don't know if you remember any of the old or if you've seen them but the shop saver has like a bar that goes across so you have to compress the bristles and you can't have anything in the way of that Oh, that's right yeah so i think there's a lot more we could do still with that which is kind of exciting yeah, so if you sort of develop your ecosystem of toolpost and yeah. dust boot, you could make them sort of more efficient again, mm-hmm. if, assuming they're working together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for your development of this sort of range of tooling related things. It's cool. <laughs> it's an interesting, we always thought, oh, this is a possibility, but most of my ideas always oh. came through and like more along the like, aesthetic knack products and it finally just started to click i think once we got the dust boot figured out and the tool posts that we had and and then you know it's been nice yeah awesome what's jumping back to you what's your do you have a september like butter product ready that or or, you don't have to say what it is but Mm. is there something in the works that's close yeah for end of august yeah there is it's not fresh fresh it's a sub variant of kit it's this little collaboration we did with a oh, yeah. youtube channel called never too small they ran a design exhibition last year i think it was and we designed a piece for that called kitter colin and then we've gone into sort of partnership with them where we're going to release it as kind of a cross-branded piece yeah and that is almost ready to go i could release it next week but then i think i'd get in trouble for not having done all the prep work because <laughs> with this with the monthly product releases it's meant that jay and sarah have started building out a checklist of everything that has to be done before a product is released and that ah. checklist is looking outrageously long and complicated these days so i don't know whether i'm gonna <laughs> check all those boxes <laughs> but we'll see how we go next week i've got the upholstery it's got an upholstery element and this will be our first product mm-hmm. with upholstery in it. So it was delicious to see those come in last week. They're just these lovely little, little simple seat pads, seat but in seat pad, beautiful, yeah. Yeah, beautiful wool, really nicely upholstered. And then they're going to get a, this laser engraved sort of limited edition plate fixed up underneath them. So I think that'll be the last element to come in is that laser cut, laser engraved um, yeah. component that gets then fixed off to the upholstery. So yeah, we're pretty close. I don't know if we'll get it out the door next week, but we should at least, I reckon we'll be able to open up pre-orders next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, just, I just need to shoot the fabric options and get from there. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I like I like the so, the spin. It kind of looks like, I think that was John, right? That made the kind of like, it's almost like that little thing at the top is similar to the thing you made that had, it's like two pieces that can rotate. A little cup holder. Yeah, the cup holder reminds me of that. yeah. Yeah, well, we've got John's little plant concept too, which is That's, super close. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, that that could have come out this month as well, but I think we'll that'll be soon. And yeah, we'll get Kitter Colin out the door first. Yeah, 
Very cool. Because we've had quite a lot of pre-interests, like pre-registrations for that. So hopefully we'll be able to get some tasty sales going. Yeah. Does that partnership drive a lot of traffic then? I think it will. Yeah, yeah. They've got a huge subscriber base and they produce really nice video and photography content. So their part of the deal was sort of producing that content. Yeah. And then depending on how they... Oh, wow, my internet's gone completely. No wonder we're having trouble. Depending on how how they sort of distribute that content, I think that'll really help drive a lot of no traffic. Because they've got a million plus YouTube subs, I think. Yeah, I saw that. My friend Joe, I've mentioned a few times, he mentioned that YouTube is now doing a thing, a new feature that if you have a Shopify store, you can connect products to like your YouTube channel and I think show them on mm. different uploads. So you may look into that. I don't know how it cool. works with like a partnership deal, but for your own channel, at least. Mm. How does that work? Like what do, what do you actually display in the video? Uh, or is it just a way of linking I through? Think, you like know, you've seen like how people have like merch down there. Have you seen that before? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, yep. a, like a hoodie or a t-shirt or something is pretty common. And you tie it yep, to one of those yep. like. It's, it's pretty popular in the States anyway. It's like there's these dropship houses that make stuff for those big YouTubers and they just send it out so they never have to touch it, which would be yep. very nice if you're that large. And I'm guessing it's going to look like that, but it kind of leads me into... I was already feeling super limited by Squarespace's e-commerce stuff, so I'm pretty certain I'm going to move mm. all the CNC stuff, at least the shop, over to Shopify here sometime. And it's been an interesting process yep. of... I actually started playing with that on the plane and it was a little bit slow internet wise <laughs> to, to keep doing e-commerce development on an international flight. But yeah, some stuff works really well. Like they have an importer for, for all of the physical products, but it only pulls over like the short blurb of text and like not all of the extra, like the stuff you build, right? That's like at the bottom of a, all the product pages. So that's all still like stuck on the other side and none of the digital products moved over for some reason it seems a tall task yeah so you've you've already got both feet in both camps right like you've got shopify for knack yeah knack that's yep. right yeah and then you want to move the scene the cnc PDX stuff to shopify as well yeah it's just like the more we've been doing gotcha the variant options are limited. The like I can't yeah. integrate when I get an order from Squarespace, I can't pull it into Airtable, even with Zapier. Like it's not okay. an option. Honestly, it feels like it's buried to see the commerce, which is the shop stuff. It's like a, a couple tabs deep yeah. and like you can't do much with the customer accounts, like and it's just a lot of it's kind of an afterthought almost in my my thoughts. Mm. Yep. That makes sense. Anyway. Cool. Well, that sounds like a matey project for you. Yeah, just I'm trying to figure out how to do it in a way that's not going to like consume me for two weeks. But I don't, mm. I don't want it to take forever either. You know, not not do it yeah. because of that. Well, at some point, you just need to send it right and yeah, <laughs> roll it over. That's kind of what my thought was too. It is mm. similar to what you kind of did was get everything moved and in terms of like actual products and you know so that it's purchasable and stuff like that and then turn it on and just keep fixing stuff as i go but there's just so many more yeah. options like with filtering and like all the plugins you can do and mm. yeah yeah i find shopify is pretty good for developing stuff offline to a point interesting how do you as long as you're not not to plug in heavy you can sort of run it all in a sort of offline interesting uh, mode i haven't done that getting it already yeah you can have duplicates of your theme and to sort of run a new theme unpublished oh and get yeah everything ready and then oh, just yeah. switch the themes over and yeah i thought you're meaning like <laughs> a local developer environment and i was like eh, that's fancy oh uh, you can. Jay did do that for our recent build. They built a GitHub, sorry, oh. a GitHub repository, yeah. and did it all fancy like that. But then I think in the end we just ended up sticking with the yeah Shopify sort of interface online. But I'm I'm no Jay though. No, me neither. Never too small has no. two point one six million subscribers. <laughs> That's I know, right? Crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Dream yeah, numbers. Growing really fast too. Like I don't think they're the channel's that old. Maybe a couple of years old or something. 
what's the story? Like, what's their, I guess I could read it, but it's, as I understand it, Colin, whose channel it is, just started filming people's little apartments and like, mm. you know, cute, well-designed, tiny apartment in Hong Kong and then a little apartment in ah. Paris. And like, I think he was kind of, he was on the road pre-COVID and just made, started making these little videos of people's cool spaces and it, yeah, it's obviously just blown up and like they've got a, a team of staff now. Wow, yeah, that's cool. Amazing. Very cool. So, and they're great to work with. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'll watch something when I have some weekend time. I'm sure I'll love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Cough, cough. There's going to be some major you, spikes in my audio. You you were right about your uh, your sniffle, your mute button needs last week. That was, that oh, was, yeah. that was a, it wasn't hard, but it was, it was up there. <laughs> it was up there with the, uh, the cutouts. Yeah. Yeah. Sound, yeah. <clears throat> you sound, you sound better. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Now my, I'm proper, properly offline now. So my air table. Yeah. No, it's a, have to copy this absence, but what's your dream future of fusion 360? <laughs> I think you should start with that because I, <laughs> I've, I was trying to, I was curious what you've thought about in terms of potential. Mm. Yeah. And that's an interesting one. I mean, there's so much about fusion that I don't use and I appreciate that it's called fusion and they're trying to pack a huge amount of functionality into one package. Yeah. Um, but you know, for me personally, I'm only really interested in the design workspace and the cam the manufacturing workspace. Yeah. I do use the rendering workspace a little bit, so it's kind of handy byproduct mm -hmm. to have that sitting there, but you know, at this stage, I'm completely disinterested in sort of generative design and things like that. I mean, there's so much in the package, like electronic design and yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, it's an, an amazing piece of software. So all power to them. Well yeah. done, I reckon, but getting to where they're at, but the things that I would like to see, I would no, well, let's just start with what bugs me. The things that irritate <laughs> me most that I'd like to see improved, uh, drawings. I just find almost unusable. Um, yep. Yep. Agreed. I, I was ch chatting to this other cabinet maker yesterday and we were both kind of in the same camp of like, like we just, neither of us use the drawing function because we both find it so irritating. We'll do everything we can to get away with not having <laughs> to output drawings. So <laughs> uh -huh. in my case, that's, you know, that's using description and screen capture and doing, you know, quick little videos for clients where I walk them through a model and pick it apart for them. And that's been a really effective tool to me and for me. And that's, you know, big part of the reason I do that. Yeah. Yes. I find it effective, but it also means that I don't have to do detailed tech drawings. Yeah. And, and then other than drawings, I think I look, parametric design is why I switched from Rhino to Fusion yeah, and chasing those parameters. So the parameters are just incredibly powerful. So I'd love to see sort of more in that space of the limits that I run up against are when I'm trying to make cabinet models with left-handed and right-handed versions <laughs> and yes, two see. drawers, three <laughs> drawers. Like, yeah, you can do cool <laughs> stuff with linear, linear arrays and yeah. try and fudge it by creating like binary switches with counts that go from zero to one and stuff. But then, yeah, it's just, it's not quite there and it's kind of feels a bit hacky trying to do it that way. So I'd love to see more sort of complexity in the parameter space. It's interesting you bring that up that one of the common requests that I've seen kind of on the forum and publicly and, you know, in mm. different places is, is parameters within the cam space, like machining, manufacturing. Oh yeah. And yeah. That's, you know, been in the works for years, supposedly, and it would make a huge difference. I literally, you know, this week with doing patterns and one of the things I constantly want to be able to do is pattern, modify patterns through NC programs. So like if I want a two by two yeah, grid nice. of parts, I want, I don't want yeah. to have to have a separate setup That'd for that, cool. where then the cam is potentially different yeah. and you get a different look or, so that that's a slight bit, but you know, honestly, I haven't. I've run into a, a bunch of different problems over the years I've used Fusion with the parameters are cool, but 
they're really limited compared yeah. to like probably what you've experienced yeah. with like grasshopper there's so many more possibilities with the way you can do simple like uh, what what does it come down to some type of mathematical formulas is but that you know one of those like yeah. uh, parameters i think is what they call them but math equation features yeah yeah i, know I haven't I mean. seen yeah. a, much movement for more like the thing i want is if then statements more than anything yeah exactly. in terms of yeah yeah um, building baking in some some logic that'd be cool i mean yeah and having those parameters be able to flow across workspaces would be wonderful like if you could just i've always just got control p or command p mapped to parameters if i could just mash that in the manufacturing workspace or the rendering workspace and be able to update yep. anywhere that would be wonderful yeah. there's like two other major mm. things that we kind of hit on some of it last week that i've really wanted or i have a dream of i guess at this point and one is to like have fusion more connected outside of itself we yeah. hit on that with like the idea of Airtable being connected or if there's a zapier connection i think some of this is coming their intention mm. i know is to make the api more public and like open and you know honestly cool as a person that can't code all that well or at all what i want is them to connect it to zapier or <laughs> straight to Airtable yeah would be yeah. ideal and <laughs> then by putting it into zapier that allows something that's kind of the next level for me is i love a connection between selfishly but i think it's fairly reasonable for a product design suite is i want to be able to connect my design some form of my design assets with infusion to like shopify directly yeah. i don't want to have to have uh, something in between dream. and yeah. you know i want to pipe in the 3d model i want to you know it'd be cool if you could just somehow sync your renderings or like there's a whole lot there that you know pull different like dimensionality or something it, you know there's a lot of potential that and we keep you know you and i have this dream of some type of configurator of products that i think Somewhere yeah. between those two pieces of technology could cr be created. Yeah, that's that's really my next desire outside of like yeah, just well, some small internal improvements. <laughs> sure. Well, I feel like it's so close in a sense too. Like I think that's why it's exciting yeah. slash frustrating at times because, you know, Fusion is online. You can open your model in a browser and spin around and pull it apart. So like it feels like not much of a leap to go from there to... <laughs> Yeah. Having that accessible within another website like Shopify or, you know, why can't I access my parameters via the web browser? Like it's right. all so close. Yeah. So that's, that's an exciting space. Yeah, I know. I managed to get in a room with some Autodesk people a few years ago when we started building our first Fi website and we had a great chat and kind of quickly sort of ran into why that wasn't going to work. Yeah. In terms of forge and you know having to pay for server time every time a customer yeah. turned a turned a knob like uh -huh. changed a, a dimension on a set of shelves it was going to ping off another server request another cost you know cost a, another few dollars in server time so <laughs> it's up, it's not designed for that and it's not we're not there yet but i feel like it is very close yeah it's be, exciting. who knows how long you need that kind of idea is but yeah, yeah i don't know exactly. it definitely this kind of thing obviously came up for me as having gone last week and just, yeah, I think people have a lot of people, I think that do CNC work, do some design work. And so there's a minimal amount of like fixed string design and stuff like that. You know, if you're a job shop, but for people like you and I were, we're like, I don't know, I wouldn't say pushing the limits, but we're like trying to get everything we can out of, out of the parameter space and, and design. And it's like, just give us a little bit more, you know, mm. we're used to this other capability that you're already doing these great things. All parameters are so powerful for cam too. Like even if you're, you are a job shop and you're just like punching out other people's part, like some of the stuff Rob Lockwood's done with like yeah. cam templates using yep. parametric stock bodies and all that. Just yep. really clever. It's not super complex, but just super smart use yeah. of parameters and automatic stock setup. I think that stuff's awesome. The Rob Lockwood container method, container, container, yeah. yeah, 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 model TM. We've all watched that lecture, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I put a link to it. <laughs> uh, Lock if you haven't seen it, it's go watch it. I like the basically the first time I met Rob in person was at 
the Fusion Academy and he had given basically that pitch on his container method in a little session I watched and I've just had this like I think I immediately I went up to him afterwards I was like how do I do this for nested parts and he was like well <laughs> not quite as easy but I think it's possible because like a lot of the benefit of it is it will start to generate a lot of cam for you if you're doing like a single part yeah. device you can basically yeah. have it do roughing and and surfacing finishing by just generating those files and having things pre-selected and if you haven't seen it you definitely have to watch i'll link it his video on how it works but it's definitely i know a lot of people use that kind of thing especially when you're milling single parts in a vice there's some kind of fixed work holding it's brilliant yeah it's fantastic yeah i definitely had moments this week where i was getting my teeth back into fusion workspace properly yeah and I definitely had a few moments of like, oh, Rhino, you're so powerful. Why don't <laughs> right? you just do all the, why don't you just do all the things, Rhino? Cause I, you're so fast and clean and, but yeah. It's hard to describe to people that haven't used Rhino for a decent amount of time, like how fast it is, but it's like the ability, like if you, I'm assuming you use a lot of text commands, like via the keyboard. I've got. Yeah, 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 I use a lot of single letter, yeah. what are they called? Macros, short, shortcuts. Yeah, yeah. That's so like... my left left hand is like poised <laughs> in a set position on my keyboard and like <laughs> I've got a couple of things mapped on my mouse as well. And so it's just like, yeah, it's ridiculously fast. You're getting me all hot and bothered. It's it like is. the workflow. There's I'm no... not saying I'm an incredible operator. I'm just saying, yeah, you get, you get those shortcuts mapped, you get comfy. And it's just like a left click, right click bonanza, and you can just power through stuff. <laughs> so fast. It, it's like being a court stenographer of Rhino. Like once you get yeah, those, exactly. your, your macros figured out, yeah. it's like just click, 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 click. Yeah. yeah it's, it's totally. brilliant for, I always call it my Swiss army knife because it's like everything that fusion can't do yeah. or is slow at. I'm just like you know, dropping stuff in there. And so I guess we didn't even hit on that, but we'll have to link to your, uh, your configurator. Is that last week? No, I think it was fresh what? this week. Your, your configurator, uh, configurator. I think we mentioned that last did we week. Last yeah. Week? The, on. the 3d one for Kita parts. Yes, we did. Never mind. Dr- still good Dragon this week. Drop. Still good. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. But Does- yeah, that block instance counting function is fantastic. I love it. Have those been being able to present them like that help to convert people on purchases from um, custom ones? Funny timing. Having gone from feeling like I was doing one a day, I don't think I had one this week. No, <laughs> we we jinxed it. I jinxed it. I didn't get to use that new 3D thing yet. So uh, hopefully soon. Yeah. You, oh yeah, that'd be. You probably already do this. You really. I haven't used it myself yet, but that whole like idea of sending somebody a screen recording in the quote is yeah. brilliant. It's like such a personalized yeah, been... thing. Do you do that with those? Sure do. Uh... Hey, Justin, here's what I've drawn up for your, you know, your corner <laughs> unit, blah, 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 and drop that link into the quotient, to the line item, and then, yeah, it's all there. You made me blush when you said my name. I was, it's like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, he's talking straight to me. <laughs> yeah it's good people seem good to really appreciate those little videos no kidding it's and what we talked about that before but it's so good even when you just drop them like the 3d view and and fusion right like the share a public yeah. link it's like that usually gets a lot of excitement yeah. yeah i think you're pulling sort of sharing your process with people i think is really effective like i've always pre-covid i used to really enjoy that as well like sitting down for a meeting with someone in the office and opening up rhino and like you know, basically modeling a solution to what we're talking about in real time as we're chatting, always a really effective tool. A sexy Don Draper move. And that's oh, where man. Rhino shines. Cause you just like, hold on, give me three yeah. seconds. <laughs> you just <laughs> give me a moment. Yeah. And I've, those little videos that I've made over the last week, little screen capture videos for Instagram have been, I haven't seen engagement levels that high maybe ever. Like wow. there's, there's that blend of talking, getting a bit nerdy in terms of how oh, yeah. we're doing stuff in terms of process, but at the same time, sort of presenting a design concept and talking about the what and why and sort of pulling people into your process, I think, yeah, has meant that those little videos have been ultra effective. 
you know what I bet engaging people. I almost guarantee that it's kind of how like the thumbnail thing works on YouTube. I guarantee yeah. that it is higher engagement because you're recording yourself as well, like as a video clip. Yeah, absolutely. Because when it's just a yep. screen recording and you don't have that person to connect to, the average person that sees that's going to go, "What the heck is Jem talking about? I don't. Who is this? Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. like there's nobody to to latch on to, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, next step will just be to get that second camera set up, the, get the DSLR framed, yep. shallow depths of field. Oh, yeah. Then I can cut between the two cameras, you know. In my, yes. new, my new YouTube studio booth. <laughs> you get that long hallway shot. Neons. Yeah. So that's why I moved it around, just for that long shot. No. <laughs> It was it was already pretty good. You have that like nice triangulated fabric background. <laughs> Did you make those? Yeah, that's a product. They were uh, remnants from a product that we cut for someone else. It's like an acoustic, yeah, product. wood wool. Yeah, nice. Yeah, you know, one of the other weird things that probably better to show, but maybe I'll throw a photo on, on too. But yeah. uh, I maybe you've had this experience when you travel. You see like other people's like preferable tastes of things like potato chips and <laughs> it's very interesting to come from even if you travel around america you'll see different flavors of things like that more popularly in different yeah. regions because you know a lot of different types of people and there was a couple normally i'm like yeah it doesn't sound good some kind of weird pickle thing or but there was these they look like lays in america but they're walkers sizzling flame grilled steak it just says Max really big in the front. And I was like, I got to try those. I don't know why the idea of steak flavored chips was like <laughs> somewhat appealing. And I like brought them home in my bag. And like and it didn't sound good until like yesterday when we were taking a break from our sweatshop. And uh, uh, yeah. I pulled them out and I was like, Ricky, you want to try these chips? And he was like, sure. And we, <laughs> I can tell he was like not super into them, but I didn't force them. <laughs> we both tried them and we're just like, oh, that is. It's like exactly like eating steak in a chip. It is shocking <laughs> and very disturbing. And I, the rest of the day, I just kept tasting that. I'd be like walking around the shop and be like, oh, steak. That's weird. <laughs> I thought well, you, when you said that, I thought you were going to say the rest of the day, I just spent in Dali trying to emulate that feeling. And <laughs> I have this, I have the chips. I can taste them right now. And I, now I want to know what kind of chips you guys have <laughs> that I don't know about. Oh, I don't know. Nothing too crazy. But they're, they're not crazy to you. The other one was the UK, the, the, the British seem to like, what's it called? Shrimp cocktail a lot. Oh, that, that sauce. It just, yeah. It comes, I've seen it on like cooking mm. shows, but they have shrimp cocktail flavored chips, prawn cocktail. Yeah. And that, that one prawn I cocktail. could not do <laughs> yeah i don't want seafood on my chips <laughs> thank you <laughs> now that's gotta be tollied though <laughs> 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 yeah cool man should probably head off and i need to jump in with ricky probably he's yeah churning through more dust boots awesome yeah Sorry. hope your trip goes well thanks can't wait to get my dust boot my baby pants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's on the way. It's picked up. I, thought, I was literally like half awake dreaming about it this morning. That's how I got that. <laughs> it's kind of like how I woke up two days ago when I started working on the pedestals again. I woke up dreaming of how, like, the second I woke up, I was thinking about fixturing on how to hold the pedestals. And I don't, I don't know uh -huh. where that came from. I must have been thinking about it while I was sleeping. <laughs> it's just like, I guess I got to work on that today. Fixturing dreams. That's like, that's where we solve our fixturing problems. <laughs> Now sleep. It's like a deeper version of 3D mental cam. <laughs> yeah. Sweet dreams, Justin. <laughs> Don't let the mighty bites bite. <laughs> <laughs>Man, have a good weekend. Are we actually hanging up? I don't know what's yeah, happening. We're actually okay. hanging up. Let's okay. do it. The real one. Okay. All right. The real one. <laughs>
Bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs>